Let me pray for us tonight before we get into God's Word. God, we love you so much. We thank you for letting us have fun. We thank you for giving us money. We thank you for blessing our lives in, in different areas. And God, I thank you for the people in this room tonight that we can get together and have an incredible time and at the same time lift up your name. Thank you so much for loving us like you do. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. And thank you for taking care of us, even in the area of finances in our lives. We love you, Father. It's in Christ and that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Guys, as we really do look at it, the whole concept of what happens when you fall in love with your money. We will do, as you can see from our 64 different contestants tonight, we will do just about anything for money. Um, <clears throat> we, will, we will get in here and let people laugh at us and encourage us as we do here at XDL. Um, but we're all about that. We're, I saw a new show. You've seen that we talked about those, those shows last week. We talked about the crazy jobs people do and the, you know, like the fishing for death or whatever show we talked about that was last week. But this week, there's a new series coming on, and it's all about truck drivers that drive over frozen lakes. Have y'all seen that one yet? Okay, it's like a 97% chance of death every time you go out there or something. I don't, I don't really know, but they're doing that because they're going to get paid a whole lot of cash if they make it home. We will do just about anything in this world for money. And what happens is when we begin to love our money and allow it to control us, we do all kinds of things that we wouldn't normally do. And I want to show you a clip of something that, that was basically just because of a desire for money that a guy made a decision that most of you probably saw anyway. Watch this clip. So how many of you saw that when it actually happened? Y'all don't watch Survivor anymore? You're like, dude, I'm as busy as you are. Like, I'm home to watch Survivor. Make you watch it? <laughs> Apparently, you're the only one in the room that watches Survivor anymore. <clears throat> Here's the deal. Earlier in the show, in the season, Yao Man had won a truck. And he gave it to Dreams because they made a deal that at the last one of these things, if Dreams won the immunity, he would give that back to Yao Man. Now, what you just saw was a perfect example of what greed will do for a person. When you decide that, yeah, I've said one thing and I meant one thing, but now I have a chance to win a million bucks and forget what I said. I'm going to go out for myself. And I want us to understand <clears throat> that we can watch him on TV and criticize him or whatever, but if you're put in that situation and you don't have the right attitude about it, your money or your desire for money will control you. That is why people that have been straight and doing all this kind of stuff perfectly right all their lives will end up doing ridiculous stuff to get money because it comes to a point of either I have money or I don't and that becomes the most important thing but I want us to talk just a few minutes about why money makes us do so many crazy things sometimes <clears throat> the first verse we're going to look through is, is first Timothy 6 5 through 10 and he's going to put it up on the screen I believe and I'll read it to you it says this to them a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we, were, when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. This is the key verse for us tonight, verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith. Let me explain something to you very quickly right here. <clears throat> Nowhere in the Bible does it say that having money is wrong. So all of you that are already millionaires, you don't have to worry about feeling all guilty about that. There you go, there you go. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that having money is wrong. What it says very clearly is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You have heard that quoted so many times that having money is the root of every kind of evil. So if you have $4, you are now somehow going to sin with that. And that's what we've been taught all of our lives. God says to us, I'll give you money. If you have the right attitude about it, it can do great things for you and you can do great things with it. But when we decide to fall in love with our money and allow it to control us, we do some really, really crazy things with it. The love of money <clears throat> leads us to a couple of things, a few things actually. 
number one thing it leads us to is it makes us greedy. I don't know about you, but I've had some times in my life where greed has come out. And you don't have to raise your hands, but just, just know with me that I'm sure some of you had those moments in life where you looked at someone else's stuff and you're thinking, man, that stuff, boy. I, I went to the car show the other night with Brian and I'm walking around looking at all these trucks that like have $47 billion sound systems and lift kits and all this kind of cool stuff. And I'm like, man, all I want is a motorcycle. Can I have that motorcycle? I'm just trying to steal stuff. It don't matter. It don't matter. <clears throat> my big deal with greed, you've heard me talk about this before. My brother is one of my heroes in life, and he'll listen to this one day, and he'll be, you know, quite offended, I'm sure. But here's the deal. He's got some cash, okay? Every time we go to his house, he has a new TV that is four foot bigger than the last one. And his one, like, four TVs ago was bigger than any TV I will ever own, okay? So we go to his house this summer, or just last time we were in Texas, and we went for one of his kids' birthday party. And you walk around the corner, and he's got the, you know, the huge yard, the big-time swimming pool, the, the deck with everything in the world, a grill as big as, like, my home. He's cooking stuff over here. He's got his garage out here with all of his four-wheelers and all of his kids' toys that I lust over. And every time I go to his house, used to be a lot worse, but, but now I've learned to, you know, pray through some things. But I would leave wishing I had more of what he's got. Anybody ever felt that way about anybody else? That's called Greed. <clears throat> and what that is, is when you begin to cons consume yourself with having stuff, and you can look at other people's stuff and think, man, I have got to have what they have. That is what Satan uses to bring greed into your life and make you a greedy person. And I have had to work hard and long over the years to come home and think, okay, God, I have an incredible family. I have a home, a beautiful home, I have this, I have this, I have all these things that you've blessed me with, I'm okay, but I have to go through that debriefing time with me and God every time I come from my brother's house, because he's just like, hey, you want to drive my new whatever, you know, because I have one, whatever, it's new, you can drive that, um, <clears throat> but I'm learning those kind of things, that's what greed does, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10 says this, whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. I know some of you are in, in that boat of you make pretty good money and it's not anywhere close to as much money as you want to have. And you have gotten consumed with this whole idea of, yeah, I'm making plenty, but plenty's not enough for me. That's what greed does. That's what scripture says in Ecclesiastes. Whoever loves money never has enough money. But then you know those other people that, that have just enough money and are completely okay with that? That's because they understand what money is for and what money is about and why God gave them the money that they have in the first place. But it's a greed issue. What does greed do to us? One, it makes you buy things you can't afford. Anybody witness for me that you bought something you couldn't afford? Yep, yep, I got like seven of them right now. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if I could sell that, I would be out so quick. But you buy things you cannot afford. <clears throat> you go to your friend's house, and they have an incredible interior designer that, that works for them, and they've got the big, huge, puffy couch that you've wanted all your life, and you've got, like, I don't know, my couch, and you don't like that anymore, and you're thinking, okay, I've got to have one of those couches. I mean, that's the couch I have to have. For me, it's usually TV envy. Like, I'll go in people's homes, and I'm like, oh, Tiff, I need that 60-inch TV. I need that. And she's like, you need to shut your face. But other than that, you're okay. But you go in, and then you go to the store, and you go to one of those places that's like no interest for 72 years. And <clears throat> after that, you can pay like a dollar, and you own it, but it's really 72 years old, that kind of stuff. And you go in and purchase things that you do not need, you can't afford. And the next point is you buy things you don't need. But you want them because you're seeing other people with them. And you think... If everyone else has one of those, you need one of those. That's what greed does for you. That's what happens when you decide, I love my money and I would love more money. So I'm going to do whatever I can possibly do to get more money so I can get more stuff. That's greed coming out in you. What else does greed do? <clears throat> it makes you go against your plan to get something now. How many of you honestly have ever saved up money and purchased something with cash so you would not go into debt? A couple of us, a few of us, good examples. How many of you have saved up money, 
to purchase something with cash so that you would not go into debt and you decided early to buy it and went into debt anyway. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a few other honest people in the world too. I'm all into that. I could be saving up and I'll put like a dollar in a jar for, you know, that $1,000 thing I need. I'm like, Tiff, we're almost there, babe. Let's just go ahead and buy it and pay it off because I've got like a buck. So we're almost there. Let's, I, I've started the process. I've learned my lesson. Let's just go ahead and buy that. And then you pay it off until, you know, never. That's beside the point. Greed will do that to us. Greed will make us, us do things that are outside of our plan. And you know what's really bad? It's when one person in your family decides they want to follow the plan and you decide you don't want to follow the plan. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> Fourth thing it does is greed does it makes you bitter at people that have more stuff than you. Now, I haven't been bitter with my brother because I figure if I want something, I'll really just go to his house and take it and act like I wasn't there and move on. And then call him from Rome and go, dude, I brought your TV, but I know you ain't driving all the way here to get it, so I'll get to you later, that kind of stuff. But greed will make you bitter at people that have more stuff than you. You can, you can know if this is you when you drive down the road <clears throat> and you look to the left and you see that car on the side of the road that someone else is driving and you love it and you hate them. And you don't know them, but you're like, you know what, I hate them. And they have no idea who you are, and you don't know who they are, but they have your car, so now they are Satan. That's greed. That is what happens when you decide to love your money instead of allowing your money to work for you and use it like God meant for you to. 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8 says, Yet true godliness, we already read this earlier, but with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. The only answer in your life to greed is being content with what God has already given you. When I leave my brother's home, and I'm just using him as the, the ultimate example here, but when I leave his home, I have to go through my mind, God, I am perfectly content with who you have me, the family you've given me, the home you've given me, the cars you've given me, and all the things you've blessed me with. I'm okay with that because I know that without a doubt, every day of my life I have been living for Christ, he has taken care of me. And I've never one time, never missed a meal, you can tell, never missed a payment of any kind because of finances going out, but we have enough. And God said to me years ago and he says to you through his scripture, I'll give you enough to be content with what I have given you. And I'll protect you and I'll take care of you, but your job is to be content with what I have given you and understand it is not always about just finding more. <clears throat> I, think we, I think we use too much money time. I'm about to run out of time. I'm in trouble already. <clears throat> to get past greed, the number one thing you've got to do is become content with who he made you. Number two thing that the love of money does is it makes you selfish. Any selfish people willing to admit that? Any people sitting next to selfish people that were not willing to admit that? Okay, moving on. Greed leads you to become selfish. When you become greedy, everything from that point on is what you can get for yourself. James chapter 3, verse 16 says, For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil, every kind of evil. The Bible says where you are selfish and greedy, you'll do anything. And he makes it very clear also in Philippians 2, 3, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Selfishness is why financial issues are one of the top reasons people get divorced in our country today. Because when you decide as a husband that my money is my money and your money is your money, you're on the track for seeing it all fall apart. And when you decide that I make all the money and you don't make any money, you're on a track to seeing your wife be very unhappy. Wife, if you're the one making the money and you decide, I'm going to keep my money and both the husband and the wife have a job and you'd be like, I work, I'm keeping my money, you pay all the bills. Let me explain something to you guys. It ain't your money in the first place. Every dime you have, God gave you. So when we decide that our money is our money, we are on a track to selfishness. What does selfishness lead us to? Number one, what comes with that, it divides marriages between your money and my money. And I truly believe that's one of the reasons that our, our marriages are in the, the place they are today. 
my wife and I have had like, I don't know, one fight in 10 years, for real, because she's like the sweetest person in the world, and I'm just an idiot, and I go, yes, no, no. But really, but the only thing we ever have frustrating conversations about is money. Because she keeps the books, and she gives me my allowance, and if I don't spend just that, sometimes I'll come home and go, honey, can I have five more dollars? And she says, yes. And then sometimes I come and I go, honey, can I have shut it? Because she knows how much money we have or how much we don't have. So that's one of the only frustrating moments we even have in marriage. That's why finances are one of the reasons that people are breaking up all over this country. Because I'm making my money, you're making your money, let's just go do our own thing because we're sick of each other. But I promise you, when you decide to be selfish and you decide that all the money is about you, when you go with the greediness idea, you will become a selfish person. And selfish people have problems in relationships with other people. Number two thing it does is it keeps you from giving any of your money to help other people. You've heard from some people like that, you're like, you know what, I got a job and I'm making my own money. All those other people can just forget it. I don't need to give anything away. I've got my money. I'm taken care of. I'm saving for retirement. I'm saving for this. And I got 74 different savings accounts. And I've got $14 million in the bank. They need to go get their own. That's what selfishness leads us to. Third thing is it makes you constantly drive to have more. Scripture said to us clearly just a minute ago, people that love money can never, ever, ever have enough money. What do you do with that? You find a way to be content with what God has given you. Yeah, strive for more. Strive for the, to be the best you can be, but understand what it's about because of this. Number three thing is what happens when we love our money and, and let it control us. It, makes us. it makes it impossible for us to follow God. Well, Jared, that's just kind of ugly. I mean, for real, I can, I can deal with my money on a different occasion, but I can still follow God. What Scripture says is in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't do it. So the statement tonight is, if you are serving your money, you are not serving your God. Because Scripture says clearly you cannot do both. And it amazes me. We're talking about the whole series is getting a grip on your money before it gets a grip on you. Or as Gina likes to put it, grab your money before it grabs you. That's where she went with it. Basically learning to control your money before it controls you. And I know some of you are just like me in a lot of ways. You are controlled by your finances. Every day when you get up, you get up to go get more money so that you can get more stuff and have more things and be more like somebody. Scripture says if you're using your money for that, you're not serving your God. And we've got to walk through that because you've got to, you've got to really analyze your heart because nobody knows your heart on this. Because I've already said up front, having money is not a problem. Spending money on things you enjoy, not a problem. Doing it all according to God's plan is a key. And when you begin to work and live for money, that's when it becomes a problem. It says this, um, your money, what, we, what you must understand is you're not working for your money. You're supposed to make your money work for you. Your money, we've talked about it last week, is a tool that God has given you to do what God built you to do. So in every part of life that you look at, in every part of life that you, you see financial situations, your goal should be, Hey, God, you've given me all this. What do you want me to do with this? Now, you don't get to go home from Excel tonight and say, Oh, Jared told me I can't spend any more money on stuff I like. He told me I shouldn't be greedy. No. I don't mind. I, I don't think there's anything in the Bible that says anything about, Hey, you can't spend money on stuff you want. There's definitely not anything in the Bible that says having a lot of money is a sin against God. What the Bible says is God gave you all of that money, so you could do what he wants you to do with it. So make sure in the next couple of weeks as we walk through this and finish this series next Sunday night, make sure you are evaluating how you spend your money, what you're doing with your money, and allow God to show you your steps with that. Because the key thing you've got to take out of this tonight and through this whole series is he gives everything, we talked about last week, everything you have he gave you. Every dime. He gave it to you for a purpose. 
And in that purpose is God's plan for your money, God's plan for your family, God's plan for your business, God's plan for your life. Every bit of it's part of his plan. Make sure that your finances are according to who he is and the plan he has for you. And he will bless the crud out of you financially. He promises us that. Dude, if you'll be faithful with a little bit, which is what most of us have, I'll give you more. If you're faithful with a little bit more, I'll give you more. That's scripture. That's his promise. Next week, we will talk about God's plan for all that money that he gave you and how he has a part in saying, okay, I've given you this million dollars. Now, let's talk about where we're going to divide it up. And you, you'll want to hear that. So be back next week. Bring all your friends. Um, we won't have the money machine back, so uh, grab a fake dollar on your way out or something tonight. But, guys, thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of a crazy night that we got to have a good time. We love you, and we trust that you will go home and evaluate where you are financially. And uh, not for our benefit, not for anybody's benefit but your own. And so that you will know that you're doing everything God calls you to do financially. And he'll bless you like crazy for it. Let me pray for you. God, again, we love you. We thank you for your word, and we thank you for what you teach us about the money that you have given to us. And God, we just trust you that you're going to provide for us and take care of us. And number one, let us be content with what you have given to us. You're an amazing God, and we love you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.